morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Francis of Assisi, American National Catholic Church. Today, we're celebrating the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our main celebrant for today's uh, Eucharist is Father Anthony Lipari, all the way from Tom's River. So uh, please stand as we welcome our main celebrant. And our uh, opening hymn will be Glory and Praise to Our God, Song number 671, 671. Lord Jesus Christ, one Son of God, 
Glory to God, Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at our right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God our Father. Let us pray together. O oh God, whose word burns like a fire within us, grant each of us a bold and faithful spirit, that in your strength we may be unafraid to speak your word and follow where you lead. We make this prayer in Christ. Amen. Amen. My soul thirsts for you, my God. My, my soul thirsts for you, you, my God. Oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry, weary land where there is no water. My soul thirsts for you, my God. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary beholding your power and your glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. My soul thirsts for you, my God. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call upon your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. My soul praises you, my God. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul thirsts to you. Ah. Uh -huh. 
Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day he raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, that this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are thinking not as God does, but as humans do. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone wants to become my follower, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit anyone to gain the whole world but forfeit their life? For the Son of Man is to come with His angels in the glory of His Father, and then He will repay each according to their work. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What a dichotomy. One week Jesus calls Peter his rock, and the next week he says, Get behind me, Satan. What a dichotomy. Today, in the first reading of Jeremiah, we hear that God entices us. The Greek word was seduced. That God seduces us, and we fall prey to his seduction. Now, usually when we use the word seduce, we mean it in a, in a relationship that one overpowers the other. But my favorite meaning of the word seduce is from the old cartoons. Remember when someone would always put a hot baked pie on a windowsill, and the cartoons, the smoke would start to go like this, and the smoke would go, here. <laughs> And the cartoon character would say, okay. That's more of my idea of God seducing us. But we have a choice. We can eat of the pie, grab onto God, or we can start to think about our own ways. Maybe I'll take the pie and freeze it. Maybe I'll take the pie and share it with someone else. Maybe I'll take the pie and throw it away. We have choices. Now, in the Gospel, Jesus says something to Peter. He says, I have to suffer. The choice in that seduction, Peter chose to be human. He wanted to keep Jesus forever. He wanted to hold on to the moment. Remember when we used to call that the Kodak moment? So you can't do that. Jesus has to go through this sad experience in order for the good experience to come about. For Peter holds on to his selfishness. Peter holds on to his own thinking. Peter is just blindsided. And that's why Jesus has to yell at him. And Jesus is basically saying, Hello, remember, this is a mission. We can't keep it. We can't hold it. We have to share it. That pie must be shared. It can't be selfish. So, that's one aspect of discipleship that Jesus calls us to do today. 
The second one is the most difficult. Take up your cross. Every one of us in this chapel has a cross. Possibly more than one. The cross of the economy. The cross of relationships. The cross of personalities problems. The cross of illness. The cross of the lack of faith or spirituality. The cross of time. And when you think about it, we can be a lot like Peter. We can start to think we're in control. We can begin to start to think we've got it all together. We can possibly say, I can face the cross, I can look at that cross, and I can say, go away cross. What will Jesus say to us? Hello? That's why we came here. We have to take up our cross and carry another person's cross. And together, the cross meeting and the cross climbing will be the cross deliverance. And that cross will lead to the resurrection of our lives. This sounds very heavy, doesn't it? But just take example of what cross you carried in here this morning. Maybe it's a little one. Maybe it's a big one. Now, the cross I'm carrying at this very moment is in 35 minutes, I'm about to become a pastor. No, that's scary. <laughs> I should say, get behind me, Satan. No. <laughs> but seriously, right now, at this point, at this point, Bishop George is at a meeting, and he is, well, he's settling my future. I mean, it's a future of a cross. And I can easily say, no thanks. I'm happy being a grief counselor. I'm happy living with my dog. I'm okay. This morning, I woke up and I read my horoscope. My horoscope said, guess what? Today you're going to meet the person of your dreams. <laughs> That's a cross. I can't meet anybody right now. I'm becoming a pastor. I gotta like a lot of people. How am I gonna be able to do that? It also said in the, in the fortune cookie this past week at a Chinese takeout, money is coming your way. <laughs> money? But what am I gonna do with it? Um, should I pay the bills? Should I go on a vacation? I can't go on a vacation. I'm becoming a pastor. And I'm going to be meeting somebody. All these crosses that I have to carry. When I was a little boy, um, I was diagnosed with an illness. Um, it was a silly little illness. Um, every time I got a fever, uh, when I got rid of the fever, I would start to shake. And I would go into convulsions. And I remember my grandmother, she had really fat arms and, you know, typical short Italian lady. And she would grab me when I would start to go into the shakes. And she would run six blocks to the hospital in Jersey City. It was called St. Francis Hospital. It's not there anymore. But I remember as she was running, her arms were my face. <laughs> While I was shaking. And then she would give the cross of this child into the hands of other people who were so willing to help. 
to this very day, if I should get a fever, I get nervous. But of course, that was when I was two and three, and that was 53 years ago. <laughs> so sometimes I say, ah, I got this all under control. And my cross comes back. And I live by myself. So what do I do with that cross? So what I do is I tell my friends, if I should ever text you with funny language, get over my house immediately. And so it's happened a couple of times. The moral of the story is this. Who says you have to carry the cross by yourself? Two weeks ago, we learned of a famous celebrity who carried a cross by himself. He let the whole world think that everything was great and wonderful. He did a fantastic job at denying his cross. If we only could have helped. And ever since he's died, he died, I say to myself, as a counselor, I wish I could have helped. I wish I could have told that person, I'll be there for your cross. That's why we're here today. I do not like chapels that people always face home. I like chapels when we're in a circle and facing each other. So can I ask you to do a favor? Would you just look around for a moment? And the only reason why I'm asking you to do that is because sometimes it's only at the sign of peace that we do that. But now that you've just done that, ask yourself a question. What cross are you carrying? And what can I do? So my friends, let us profess that faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born to the and became human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and died in his burial. And on the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, and who is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, we come with crosses and prayers, joys and happiness. Hear us as we offer them to your loving heart. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. 
For all those traveling this Labor Day weekend, the Lord will bring them safely to and from their destinations. We pray. Lord, we pray. That the Lord would grant rest to all those who labor and work for all those who seek employment. We pray. Lord, we pray. For students, that God's Spirit would help them grow in wisdom, understanding, and insight. We pray. Lord, we pray. For all those affected by war and terrorism, may the grace of God bring an end to violence and destruction and provide a path to peaceful coexistence, especially in Iraq and Syria. We pray. Lord, we pray. For all of God's people, that rather than being conformed to this world, they will discern what is good and help to transform the world. We pray. Lord, we pray. For the American National Catholic Church, that as the church continues to grow, God will provide the guidance and resources needed to enable them to continue to spread God's word that all are welcome. We pray. Lord, we pray. For all those suffering in body, mind, or soul, may God give them strength to heal and to carry on. And if they are for the nation, we should especially pray today. Instead of a closing prayer for the intercessions, this weekend, Labor Day weekend, I ask that you pray for all those who work hard, whether in factories, schools, highways, and also, if you remember, um, for a long time, Labor Day weekend was a special time that we thought of people with the illness of muscular dystrophy. When Jerry Lewis used to have the telethon, and it would start on Sunday and end on Monday at 6 o'clock. Do you remember how he used to close the telethon every year? He would take a chair, go on the stage by himself, no celebrities, all the spotlights would shut down, and he would sing this song. I think this song says a lot about our prayer. Though you walk through the storm, keep your head held high, and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky, and the sweet silver song of the Lord. Walk on
gifts are now prepared. Pray with me that they may be made acceptable and pleasing to God. Lord, may this Eucharistic offering bless us always with your saving grace and accomplish in our lives the redemption that it signifies. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give God thanks. For God is almighty and eternal. In God we live and move and have our being. Each day, each of us experience the wonders of God's love and receive, even now, a pledge and foretaste of eternal life. Possessing the first fruits of the Spirit, in whom God raised Jesus from the dead, we hope to enjoy Christ's Paschal victory forever. So with angels and saints and all people, we joyfully sing this hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, accepted at supper for the last time with those he loved. He took the bread, and as was the custom, he said the blessing. And then breaking the bread and sharing it with each of them, he said, take this, all of you, eat of it, and this is my body which will be broken for you all. supper was ended, he took the cup, and again he praised God, giving thanks. Handing the cup to each of them, he said, Take this, all of you, drink of it. This is the cup of my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord God, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting each of us worthy to be in your presence and to serve you. We pray that all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ today may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Perfect us each day in love, together with all the leaders of the churches. For George, our leader, 
were all bishops, clergy, religious brothers and sisters, deacons and their families, and all who minister to your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all who have died in your mercy into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share that eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, Francis, Claire, Anthony, and all your saints throughout the ages. In union with them, may we praise you and always give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. So, together, let us pray the words he gave to us for the journey of carrying our cross and the crosses of others. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day, and your mercy keep us all free from sin and protect us from the anxieties of life until we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your disciples and followers, I give you peace. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins and weaknesses, but rather look upon the strength and faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your heavenly kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace.
like St. Francis of Assisi, American National Catholic Church, everyone is invited to come to the table of the Lord to receive the body and blood of Christ.
us pray. Loving God, at this table we are fed by you, healed by you, and sent by you. Bless us as we go forth to take up our crosses, to help with others, so that we may achieve what we receive this table. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will have our parish brunch immediately after the Mass, so please join us. Please stay for some, uh, some uh, food and socializing. Um, this uh, month of September, next week, we will be resuming our uh, Mass times to 12 noon, so please remember next week it will be 12 noon. And uh, we will be participating as well in the Bloomfield Harvest Fest on September 27th. And uh, I would ask some volunteers if you would like to, to uh, uh, be part of the booth. And also on the 28th will be our annual parish homecoming mass where we invite everyone uh, that is touched by St. Francis to celebrate it, uh, together. One last announcement. Um, it's a sad, sad announcement. It happens the first week of September every year. It's school time. So, may I ask everyone who goes to school or teaches in school to please come home. Why don't we include anyone who hopes to go to school? <laughs> All right. With the congregation, please extend your blessing hand towards them. May Jesus, who also studied scriptures and followed his teachers, bless you. And now we send you forth to another year of learning and teaching and growing. May you be filled with these blessings and always be assured of our knowledge, our support, and our love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's give them a round of applause. I one time, um, I one time was uh, helping out at a church, and this is what they did the first Sunday in September. They always asked the kids to bring their backpacks, and they would have the blessing of the backpacks. <laughs> you know, please, this week, um, I am a former educator. Uh, I taught high school and college, and I also taught fifth, sixth, and seventh grade language arts. Teachers need strength. Um, I went from teaching in a normal fashion to lately teaching is more like teaching, quarterbacking, and computerizing at the same time. Um, also pray for families um, that they will see themselves as a blessing to teachers and to students that we just don't leave it in teachers' hands. That we work together and the teachers rely on us when we teach at home and that we teach in the school that it works all together. So if you know a teacher, give them a call this week and say, bless you. And try to do that at least once a month. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. As we close out this unofficial summer, 2014, and welcome newness of life, the new month, and new journeys. May the Lord bless you, keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And may the Lord lift up his face and grant you peace, joy, love, and blessing. 
as we go forth in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ascended, let us go in peace, to love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, we will be singing, Lead Me, Lord, song number 715, 715. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.